Y'all, we're making monkey bread. Come on. Welcome to Highfalutin Low Carb, the almost weekly web series where we find and test the best low carb recipes this crazy internet has to offer. Today, we're tackling monkey bread. Stay tuned. All right guys, low carb monkey bread. Can it be done? Today we're gonna to find out by testing two very popular online recipes for this, I guess you could say, instant classic. So we're gonna find out today by testing two recipes. The first is a fathead dough based recipe, and this is amazing pull apart keto monkey bread. And this is by the website healthyambitions.co, not .com. Co. Our second recipe is a coconut flour recipe that is not fat head based, it's just traditional risen dough. And this is a easy keto coconut flour monkey bread by the website Janet's Delicious Low Carb Kitchen.com. Now before we begin, I need to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for design, photography, um, web development, freelancing, and tons of other things. It's for creative and curious people like you and me. You're sitting here watching an instructional video, and as you imagine, this is what I do with my life. So you can imagine I'm a lifelong learner. I like watching educational content and instructional content. And when I first started learning about Skillshare, I thought it was mainly about digital pursuits like photography and web development and all of that, but there's so much more. There's fine arts, there's crafting. In fact, right now I'm taking an indoor gardening class by, I think it's Ekta Chaudhry, um, uh, about houseplants and how to grow vegetables and herbs and, and, and houseplants in any setting. And I've learned that, yes, I am an overwaterer, <laughs> which I kind of knew, but also I'm not amending my soil the way that I should based on the plant that I'm planting. But anyway, there's so much there to offer. Now, right now, Skillshare Share is offering my subscribers a very special deal. The first 1,000 of you that click the link down below will get a full free month to try out Skillshare and see if you like it before you continue on with your um, premium membership. So right now, like I said, it's a limited time only. Use the link in the video description below for a full free month. All their uh, classes are like uh, 60 minutes or shorter. Uh, they fit in any kind of schedule and they all have a combination of a video lesson and a class project and you can get feedback feedback on all of that stuff from a community of millions of people. Be sure to use the link down below for a free month. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. It's sponsorships like yours that keep channels like mine on the air and for that I'm truly appreciative. All right, let's go make some monkey bread. Come on. All right guys, let's get started on our first recipe. This is gonna be the fathead dough based recipe. This is amazing pull apart keto monkey bread by the website healthyambitions.co. You'll see the links here on the screen and in the video description below. So like all fathead dough, or most of it, it starts with mozzarella cheese. So we've got some shredded mozzarella cheese and then into this we're gonna add the cream cheese. And I know it sounds weird if you're new to this. Um, it is weird that cheese becomes bread, but it does. It's some sort of uh, uh, magic, but it is. So I'm gonna put this in the microwave in 30 second increments, stirring in between, and I'll be back when this is melted together. See you in just a second. Okay, so we're back. That takes about 90 seconds in most modern microwaves, and you can see that sort of melty. Um, if it hardens up on us in a minute, we'll just put it right back in the microwave. To this, we're gonna add our eggs, and I'm just gonna give them a little bit of beating here. And if you've made fathead dough before, you know that the eggs generally don't combine very well, and she was clear to point that out, so just don't be, get out of the way. Just don't be too concerned about that. Also, we're gonna add in some vanilla extract, and I'm just gonna mix this together. And um, if you're uh, new here, welcome. If you're an old friend, welcome back. Uh, I have to say this because every, somebody brings it up in every, in every single episode. Um, uh, if you're wondering why I'm not giving exact measurements, it's because I want you to go to the websites down below. They're on the screen here and they'll be down below. These aren't my recipes, I'm just here to test them. The people that did do the hard work, they deserve the traffic, so I encourage you to visit their links down below. So this kind of looks like a stringy mess, but that's the way fat head dough looks. So we're just gonna put this to the side for a moment. And now we're gonna um, start with our dry ingredients. And this is almond flour. Um, she doesn't say to sift it, but y'all know me, y'all know me. So everybody say it together. Sift y'all. <laughs> um, I will be a, a lifelong sifter. So we're just gonna sift this out. I'm also gonna sift in this is a little bit of baking soda, not baking powder, baking soda, and salt. 
so let's just get this out of here and you're wondering why I sift and it's because look at all this stuff. I keep my nut flowers in the freezer because it keeps them a lot fresher, a lot longer. But well, what you gonna do with all that? If you ran into that and bit into that in the middle of a recipe, you'd be like, what in the world? So just sift y'all. We're gonna add in, this is some Swerve granulated Swerve sweetener, uh, which is an erythritol based sweetener. That's what she said to use. So that's what I'm gonna use. Try to follow the recipes as exactly as possible because that's the only fair way to make an assessment. So the trick now is to add this to all these liquids and get it all combined. And we're gonna do that with our little clean fingers. Try to, try to get it mixed up as best you can with a spatula, but you're gonna eventually have to come in here with your hands. So I'm gonna speed this up so you don't have to watch it, but uh, I'll meet you back here in just a sec. Okay, so our dough is combined and now we've got to make 24 little uh, balls out of this. Um, it doesn't have to be exact because um, uh, you're just pulling them, pull them apart. You just want little, little bite-sized pieces. So I'm just going to do that now and I'll speed this up so you also don't have to sit <laughs> and watch all of this. All right, so we're back. Uh, we roughly have 20, where we have 24 roughly shaped sized uh, little dough balls. And now we're gonna roll them into cinnamon and sugar. This is where, when I was making them as a kid, these would have been little biscuits that you would have cut in half. So now we have those, and then we're gonna roll them in cinnamon. This is um, granulated swerve sweetener. And then to this, we're gonna add a fair amount of ground cinnamon. So make sure this is all whisked together good. And then we're gonna dip each ball in the melted butter so that it's, it's nice and moist and then roll it in the cinnamon sugar uh, so that you have, get that little, you see the one I'm trying to get out of there, that swerve sweetener. Um, and then we're gonna roll it in this and then we're gonna put this in a well greased bunt pan. Um, the photos, she doesn't say whether butter or not and I don't see butter in her pan so I'm just gonna use my avocado oil spray and just, you want this to come out so generously oil this. So now I'm just gonna take one of these guys, dip it in the butter here, and then roll it in my cinnamon sugar so that it looks like that, like a little cinnamon bowl. Look how cute. And then we're just gonna load these into this bunt pan. So I'm gonna speed this up so you don't have to sit and watch. Okay, so we have all of our little um, dough balls in our bunt pan ready to be covered in this delicious syrup. And I'm gonna make that on the stove here. The way we're gonna start with this is in a, just a saucepan, we're gonna put a little bit of butter, a little bit of heavy cream, and swerve brown sugar sweetener, because it's usually a brown sugar topping that's on top, and then just a, literally a pinch of salt, it said. So I'm just gonna do just a, just a little bit. And then um, this is gonna go on the stove and I'm gonna bring this to a near boil. And it will be, uh, it, when it comes, I'll come back when we come to a boil. So just wait right here. Okay, so as you can see, our sauce has melted. It's just off the boil. I brought it to a gentle boil. And then off heat, we add in the vanilla extract. Stir that in and now, uh, just as you would imagine, we're gonna pour this all over our little coated dough balls in our bunt pan. Make sure that it all goes in between, betwixt, around, inside. And then this is gonna go into a preheated 350 degree oven. I'm gonna bake it for, I believe it's 20 to 25 minutes. I need to check that before I wreck that. But um, yeah, so. Oh, that looks good. This is gonna go in the oven and we're gonna bake this and then um, I'm gonna let, it, she said, let it cool for 10 minutes before you turn it out onto a plate. And then obviously all that sauce then becomes this delicious gooey topping. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna clean up here. We're gonna get started on our second recipe and I'll see you right back here in just a minute. All right, guys, so this 
beautiful thing is out of the oven. It's nicely browned. So I'm going to put this on the back burner uh, for about um, on, a, on a rack for about 10 minutes uh, before I flip this over and we're going to start on our other recipe. All right, so let's get started on our second recipe. And this is the, the non fat head dough version. This is Easy Keto Coconut Flour Monkey Bread, and this is by the website Janet's Delicious Low Carb Kitchen.com. All right, so let's get started here. We're first going to make uh, the sugar cinnamon. Uh, this is granulated um, monk fruit erythritol blend, which is what I used here. And we're to this, we're just going to whisk in a little bit of cinnamon. This is um, a lot less cinnamon than our last recipe. This is probably about half the amount of cinnamon, truthfully, of our other recipe, but no matter. So we're going to put this to the side for when we need it. This is uh, our um, going to be the sauce, right, that we pour over. Instead of doing it on the stove, she did it in the microwave. This is melted butter. And then this is uh, brown sugar um, monk, fruit, monk fruit erythritol blend. So that's what I've used here. And in that goes, and let's just try to get that combined. Let's see, get out of the way. And may have to reheat this if it solidifies before we finish with all the other stuff, but that shouldn't be a problem. Might do it anyway, just to make sure that all of that um, sugar gets dissolved in there. Boy, it's thick. Okay. So we'll just leave this to the side and let that stew. And now we start on the dough. And we're gonna start here with, I'm gonna put that out of the way just so I don't get anything in it because that would be about my speed would destroy what I've already made. All right, so we're gonna start with coconut flour and our other dry ingredients. So this is uh, a cup of coconut flour and um, she does say to either sift or whisk until all of this is nicely combined. To this, we're gonna add some very important things. This is um, baking powder, not soda, baking powder, a little bit of salt, and this is xanthan gum. And um, xanthan gum is often added to replace the gluten in um, keto and low carb baked goods because it's hard to replicate the, the feel of the gluten proteins in low carb breads. But even coconut flour, look at there. What you gonna do? Sift y'all. So this is all gonna go into a food processor and it's probably gonna <laughs> we're probably gonna tax my capacity of this food processor. So we've got our dry ingredients sifted. You just wanted to make sure that they were all combined because that xanthan gum needs to be dispersed throughout that flour pretty evenly. Um, so to this, we're gonna add butter and this is um, a lot of butter. <laughs> and I went ahead and just broke it up into smaller pieces, slice it into smaller pieces just to help it get a, get a um, a solid start. And let's gonna uh, process this about 20 seconds and then scrape down the sides of the bowl. So let's do that now, okay? And you just wanna make, she, she mentioned scraping it down regularly because you just wanna make sure you're combining everything well. To our butter and coconut flour, we're gonna add some eggs. Obviously you see there are three of them here. So that goes in. I hope it's all fit in my little, <laughs> my small food processor. Maybe it's time to upgrade. And then we're also gonna add in the um, vanilla extract. We're gonna process for 30 seconds and scrape it down. I forgot to add <laughs> our uh, brown sugar sweetener. Again, monk fruit. Uh, that should have gone in with the dry ingredients. That was my fault, hopefully. I don't think that'll affect anything too greatly, but let's just make sure we put it in. And now, scrape down things. We're gonna add a little bit of liquid. This is, she said, um, about a quarter cup of milk of your choice. Uh, I used unsweetened uh, um, almond milk. So in that goes process another 30 seconds, and then we're gonna be ready to make our little balls. Okay, so this is where we make our little monkey uh, bread balls, and we're gonna, uh, gonna make sure we get this one greased up well too. So from here, 
let's get our mixture that we made earlier. Remember the cinnamon and um, sugar. And now she says using about a tablespoon at a time, roll these into a ball. Well, that's gonna be messy. Oh, this is sticky. This is sticky. This is super sticky. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one at a time and then they're going in there. I'm gonna get my um, uh, scoop, I think. Well, we'll see. All right, I'm gonna speed this up so you don't have to watch this mess. Okay, so uh, these are our little dough balls. Uh, it was much easier with a portion scoop instead of your hands. Don't worry about your hands. Use a portion scoop with a release on it. Worked perfectly. It says to gently tap them so that they all kind of connect together. Uh, there's not as much dough in this recipe as the other one. I kind of want to put one of these. Well, no, it's too late to do that. You're just gonna have to have a little space there. All right, so I did have to put this back in the microwave for a bit. This is our delicious creamy sauce. And then we're gonna pour this all over it. This is much thicker than our other one. Texture wise, this almost feels like caramel. And um, so this is gonna go in Again, a 350 degree oven uh, for 20 to 25 minutes. And then we're gonna let it cool for 10 minutes, or I think she says 20 minutes to firm up. And then we're gonna take both of these out of the pan and try them and see what we think about them. So this is going in for 20 minutes and I will meet you back here and give you my thoughts in five, four, three, two, one. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, this is all out of the oven. It's been cooling. And um, if I can touch this one, look how beautiful this guy is. And I went ahead and took photos. This is our second recipe. I went ahead and took photos of it in the pan because I had a little trouble with Da, 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 recipe number one. Um, it, it released from the pan fine. It just didn't really hold together well, which is fine. I mean, it's monkey bread. You're gonna grab and pick on it, but I really wanted that beautiful bunt pan shape. Um, so maybe with this one, we should have done what this said and tamp them down and make sure the, the little dough balls are all stuck together, but that's neither here nor there. I wanted you to see me try to release this one so you can see how this is supposed to go um, and whether I'm gonna have trouble with it or not. So uh, let's try it. So we're just gonna flip it over hasn't hit the plate yet. Oh, and it fell apart too. So I'm glad I got the photos when I did. But um, as you can see, it's pretty, I mean, it, it released fairly well. Um, the fact of the matter is just that glu you know, gluten-free bread, it's not gonna be as sticky and wonderful perhaps as regular bread. So, all right, so let's talk about nutrition because that's one of the most important parts here. This one, <laughs> I know they're not very pretty and, and I will just say that um, you can also make this in a loaf pan and it'll probably hold together a little better. What you would do is you would line it with a piece of parchment paper and leave a couple of flaps on the side so that when you're done baking and it's cooled, you can lift that out of there and put it on a thing. So you, could, you don't have to have a blunt pan um, and maybe for at least low carbon keto version that might hold together better than what we have here. Okay, so let's talk about this one. This is our first recipe. This is the, um, what was the name of it? Uh, Amazing Pull Apart Keto Monkey Bread. And this is by healthyambitions.co. And she uh, says that this makes 12 servings. So you, we had 24 little dough balls. You get servings of what would be two of those. Now I'm gonna give you the, um, um, nutritional information without the erythritol. So sugar alcohols, we don't count. So uh, if you have, uh, make 12 servings of this and you have one serving, one serving is 243 calories. You have got uh, 20 grams of fat. You've got nine grams of protein. You've got nine total carbohydrates, three grams of fiber for what works out to be six grams of net carbs per serving. Again, that is without the erythritol. Our second recipe, this is the, what was the name of hers? Hold on, this is Easy Keto Coconut Flour Monkey Bread uh, by 
uh, Janet's Delicious Low Carb Kitchen.com. This makes nine servings instead of 12, so nine servings. If you eat one serving, it's 236 calories. You've got 21.3 grams of fat. You have got four grams of protein. You've got seven and a half grams of total carbs, not counting the erythritol, four and a half grams of fiber. So you've got three grams of uh, net carbs, six grams of net carbs. I don't know if I mentioned this one over here was 243 calories, 236 calories. So the question is, what do they taste like? Uh, let's find out. So. Um, I would normally use a fork, but it's monkey bread. I ain't going to use a fork on a monkey bread because that's what you use fingers for. It's the whole reason to make monkey bread. So I'm going to take one of these on the outside that's kind of crispy. I'm also going to take one from the inside, maybe that might be a little bit softer. And this is the fathead based dough. And I got to tell you, I like fathead dough. I'm, I'm partial to fathead dough. I do like it. I've got a recipe for it in my cookbook. If you didn't know I wrote a cookbook, it's in the video description below. You can buy it anywhere you can buy books. Uh, ketogenic diet on a budget. Um, so let's see what we've got here. How does this taste? Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> that's beautiful. Y'all, that's good. The, <laughs> the, 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 um, it's made a crust around it from the, uh, sugar. And I don't care how many times you make it, I get excited every day. I get surprised every time I make a uh, fat head dough and it, and somehow mozzarella cheese becomes beautiful, crumbly, delicious dough. That was good. It was very good. I do get a um, little bit of the swerve cooling. I do get that. Cinnamon flavor is good. Um, there's a little bit of the a little bit of the crunch and grit of granulated erythritol, but I don't, I'm not off put by that. Okay. Second recipe. This is the, um, Janet's delicious keto kitchen. And when I was making these, I was like, Oh, these aren't going to turn out right. And they rose beautifully. Um, so I'm going to get a side piece. Look at that. Let's get, I want to try one of the crunchy sides too. They're super soft, super delicate. So, let's try this one. Mm. This is much, much softer dough. It feels I know I say it every time these were both really good and sometimes I run across a recipe I don't particularly love both of these are very good if you're partial to fat head dough I really liked that this had a bite and a chew and a pull on it sort of like almost a, I don't want to say like a pizza crust because that's savory but it gives you something to gnaw on. This was much softer, much more delicate, almost, almost wet kind of feeling, but so soft, so delicate. You don't get any of the sliminess from the xanthan gum, which I appreciate. This is a little sweet for me. If I were going to make this second recipe, I might just take the sweetener down just a little bit because that is awfully sweet, so much so that the erythritol is really creating a cooling sensation. I don't taste coconut at all. Um, so either one of these is great. Uh, like I said, I'm partial to fat head, but that right there was so soft and delicate and um, really beautiful and held together well. So um, if you're allergic to almonds or nuts or tree nuts, coconut is not a tree nut. Um, sometimes they're processed in facilities that do, so I'm not, you know, just be careful. But if you're trying to stay clear of nuts, uh, this is a much uh, better option and completely delicious. Maybe just lower the sweetener just a little bit. So there you have it, folks. Can low carb monkey bread, can it be done? 
you better believe it. Uh, maybe make it in a loaf pan so that it holds together so you can pick it apart like a cute little monkey. But uh, otherwise, thank you so much for joining me. I say it every time. These videos are a way for me to maintain my low carb way of eating and looking in the end of that camera as often as I can helps keep me honest. So I appreciate you've come along for the journey. Uh, be sure to like this video. Um, give it a thumbs up down below. It lets YouTube know that they need to share this with some other people. Also, if you're not a subscriber, I ask you to hit the subscribe button down below and be sure to ring that notification bell that's right beside it because that'll let you know just as soon as I release a video. I've got a bunch more stuff coming out regularly um, that won't be on a regular schedule, but you'll want to know when it's hitting. So be sure you ring that notification bell. Find me on Facebook. Find me on Instagram. It's just highfalutin, low carb all one word in both of those locations. I talk a little more frequently and a little more freely there. Um, and then lastly, I need to give another huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Like I said, it's just uh, for lifelong learners like us and uh, creative, curious people who want to continue uh, learning throughout life. Um, it's a great way to do so. So right now, like I said, a very limited time, the first thousand people that uh, click the link that's going to be in the video description below, you'll get a full month for free uh, to check it out and see how you like it before you start your premium membership. So thank you so much, Skillshare, for sponsoring this. It's uh, like I say all the time, sponsorships aren't um, why I do this. Sponsorships are how I do this. And it's sponsorships like yours that keep channels like mine on the air. And I and my subscribers greatly appreciate it. So if you want to support me, go support them click the link down below in the description. And lastly, my rock stars, uh, my Patreon members, you're gonna start to see their names scroll here on the side. If you don't know what Patreon, uh, what Patreon is, think of it as the tip jar for the internet. It allows people like you who enjoy what people like me do here on YouTube. You can give a dollar to a month just to sort of keep the train on the tracks as it were. So uh, you'll see all their names here. It's patreon.com slash highfalutin low carb. And with that, I guess this is it. I love you guys. I'll see you next time for another video. Bye-bye.